Alright guys, so welcome back to week five of our topical series, Elephants in the Room. How many of you enjoyed Megan's math message last week talking about evangelism? That was awesome. Such a great convicting yeah. challenge. Well today we're going to talk about a concept that I think is a little taboo to us, but we're really going to dive in deep and kind of discover what this is going to look like. And this morning we're going to talk about questioning God. Questioning God. And I want to ask, how many of you guys were child question askers? Like, you asked so many questions when you were a kid in class every time your hand would shoot up. That was me. I was incredible at asking every single question that I could think of. My hand would be raising left and right. I'm pretty sure that my teacher got super sick and tired of me. But I was so curious. You know, as kids, there's so many things that we want to know about and so many questions that we ask. Why this? Why that? Because we want to learn. We want to understand. I remember babysitting for a child. How many of you get tired of those three-year-olds who just constantly ask, why this? Why that? Why blah, blah, blah? Um, and they're just curious. They're so curious. And these questions are a way of learning. They're a way of helping us to understand, to grow, to inform. But a lot of times the amount of questions and, and the question types that we ask when we're children don't really translate to when we get old. Questions can then become amounts of doubting, distrust, negative. But it doesn't have to be like that. And oftentimes we have different motives behind the questions that we ask. A lot of times they're to seek and to understand. We want to know. But a lot of times we're afraid to ask questions out of embarrassment, out of what people may think about us. As human beings, we are question askers. We, are, we were made to be curious and the desire to learn. And I think if a, if a lot of us would be honest with each other, we've had questions about God. We question God. We question the whole Christianity thing. And it's easiest for, to look back at all these series um, that we've gone through and elephants in the room and ask, what, well, what is heaven and hell? Why is God evil? Why do I have to love my enemies? And these questions can come into our minds, but we push them way down because we see questioning God as something that's wrong. We equate questioning God to distrusting him, to doubting him. And we don't want to talk about these questions in the church because we think that we should know all of the answers. If we doubt God, if we distrust God, then are we really walking with him? And these questions can build deep inside with us. And I want to talk about questioning God and, and figure out, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it good? Is it bad? What happens when we question God? And I rack through my brain types of questions that we can ask. Why does my mom have cancer, God? Why can't I afford to come back to school next semester? Why have you not lined up a job for me after I graduate? Why is my family situation going down the toilet? And these questions become heavy and hard. But I want to look this morning at a few biblical examples of questioning God and the Lord's answer. Because I believe that questioning God is a way for God to reveal himself to us in a new way. If we turn to Exodus 4, we see the call on Moses' life. And I think we're all familiar that Moses, in this, before this passage, is um, taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. And he sees this burning bush, and the Lord speaks to him and says, Moses, Moses. And, and Moses is so curious. And if we get to verse 10, it says, Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes the deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord, please send someone else. How many of you can say that you may have questioned the call of God on your life before? I know I have. 
Lord, I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm just a 21-year-old girl going to Southeastern University from a small town in South Carolina. What could I do? I don't have any cool gifts or talents, Lord. Why me? Why me? And I think that's a common question we can ask. But what's so interesting is that the Lord says, I will help you and teach you. I will help you and teach you. You see, Moses posed a question to the Lord. Why me? Why are you sending me? Why are you choosing me? Why have you called me? The Lord said, I will help you and I will teach you. I will help you and I will teach you. In another passage in Judges, we see the story of Gideon. Gideon is called as a warrior for the Israelites as they're being oppressed by the Midianites. And prior to this passage, we see that the Israelites have been disobedient to God. And because of this, the Lord has allowed the Midianites to um, overcome them and oppress them. And we pick up in verse 11 in Judges 6, where the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash the Absarite where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon said. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. How many of you would say that in your life, you may have questioned God as to why you see suffering in your life. Why am I going through this? And how can I, someone who is weak in the least of this, overcome? How is that possible for me? God, why are you allowing bad things to happen to my life? I don't understand. And how can you promise me that I'll get out of that? This is the question that Gideon is asking. But the Lord's response is threefold. He says, go in strength. I am with you. I am sending you. The power is not in Gideon. It's not his circumstance. It's not in his own strength or abilities. It's not even where he comes from. All his strength and all his power to move forward is in the Lord. His question then became a revealing of the call that God had placed on Gideon's life the strength and the power and anointing that he would be able to step into to overcome the oppression that he had gone through. And it took a question for Gideon to come to that realization. And we see later that Gideon is able to lead the charge and overcome. But it all started with a question. My last passage is in Luke 22, verses 39 through 44 probably one of my favorite passages in the New Testament where the Lord is at the Garden of Gethsemane. And in verse 39 it says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. And an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. How many of you would say that you may have questioned, Lord, can I do this? What what you've called me to do is, am I able? Because I don't want it. This is going to be hard. But not my will, Lord. Your will. 
You see, Jesus was asking God, if you can take this from me, this is hard, this is heavy, I feel it. That hour is near. But it's not about me, it's about you. Immediately he reflected back up to the Lord. The posture of his heart was out of understanding and out of the need to know. Not out of hate, not out of resentment of what he had to do, but out of love. And I asked myself, do I come to the Lord with my questions out of a postured heart of understanding and love? Or am I coming at it from a place of anger and resentment? God's response to Jesus was to strengthen him. Again, strengthen him. So my question to you guys this morning are, what are the questions that you are asking God right now in your life? But not only that, what is the posture of your heart when you ask those questions? You're not bad and you're not evil if you question God. In fact, I would be concerned if you didn't have questions for God because he's built us to be curious and to understand. And so that's part of learning and growing in relationship with him is that we seek to understand, God, why this, why that? When we ask God for questions, it's not that we come to him with the question and then walk away. There's a listening that is involved. And every single example that I just gave you, they listened for a response from the Lord. And in almost every single one, it was that Lord was their strength, and that he was with you, and he is sending you. In Isaiah 55, verses 8 through 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. We're never going to have all of the answers. We're never going to understand fully God's plan and God's purpose. But if, as we ask questions and as we come to the Lord with these questions that we have, God can use those questions to reveal himself into new ways every single day. As a child has faith, as children come out of curiosity to us asking why, are you coming to God out of curiosity? Are you asking those hard questions? Because I promise you that the more you ask, the more he will reveal himself to you. Let's pray. Father, you are so good. We can do nothing on our own, and that's okay. Because we know that you are our strength, that you are our guide. And so, Lord, we come to you knowing that we have an enormous amount of questions in our life. And we may not ever know the answers to all of them, but Lord, we can trust that you are our strength and that you will lead us and guide us. We thank you. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, 1320.